So hi, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about all the physics books that got me interested into this fascinating world of physics and how you can also try and learn something from these books regardless of what major you're studying in or whatever you're studying. Even if you have the slightest of interest in physics or if you have the curiosity to know things, to, uh, to know how things work, I suggest you read some of these books and I'll be going into detail of every book and how this book will actually benefit you and then you can decide on which books you want to read and yeah. So please watch this video till the end so that uh, you will be covered with all of these books and yeah, let's get started then. So the very first book that I'm going to be talking about is Stephen Hawking's The Theory of Everything. I don't actually have a brief history of time right now, I was not able to find it. But anyway, before I talk about a brief history of time, I wanted to talk about the theory of everything. In this book, uh, Stephen Hawking covers majorly many topics that he had talked about in the brief history of time as well. But what this book consists of is about seven lectures that he had delivered when he was a professor. And these are not lectures that were actually given to students of a very high caliber or not to the students who are actually studying physics in university but instead to normal people or, or to people who have not actually studied physics or who have a really basic knowledge of physics. So if you go into this book, uh, let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the chapters. The very first lecture is about ideas about the universe. Then we have the expanding universe, then black holes, then the origin and the fate of universe. So these are basic ideas that will really, really intrigue you and that will really excite you into learning more about this stuff. So I recommend this book to almost anybody who wants to get any idea about physics whatsoever. The next book I have is The Grand Design Again by Stephen Hawking. So if you all don't know, Stephen Hawking was a physicist working at Cambridge University towards the end of his life and also towards the end of his career. He was an absolutely brilliant mind. If you don't know, he was also suffering from a motor neuron disease. But despite that, he was one of the greatest minds of the 20th century. And the Grand Design is actually a book very different from every other book that is written. In Grand Design, he talks about the vast scope of the universe. So if you were to look at the chapters of this book again, the very first chapter is the mystery of being. And these are topics that are very vague or that are actually, if you go to see, these are topics that are actually very mind bending in nature. So again, I would recommend this book to almost anybody who wants to get any idea about physics whatsoever. So the next book I want to talk about is A Brief History of Time. Now, anybody who has heard about Stephen Hawking has definitely heard about this book as well. Before A Brief History of Time was uh, published, which was back in 1988, science or physics for that matter was viewed as something which was not accessible to common folk. But then in 1988 came along the, the book A Brief History of Time written by Stephen Hawking, which contains all famously difficult things reduced to as simple terms as you can possibly think of. So if you're just getting started with physics and if you've not read anything before that, A Brief History of Time is supposed to be your starting point into the fascinating world of physics. So regardless of what you're studying right now, and if you've not read a brief history of time, you're actually wasting a lot of your time. Go ahead and read this book right now. No matter what you're studying, you'll be able to understand this. It is written in a very fluid manner and anybody will be able to understand the book. If you want to know more about this book, I've also written a blog about this book in which I have uh, I talk about the summary and what are the topics covered in this book. So if you have time, please go through that as well. Now let's come to the next series. Uh, the series name is The Theoretical Minimum. Now this series consists of three books and it is written by a professor at Stanford University uh, by the name Leonard Susskind, who, was, who also happened to be a friend of Richard Feynman. So his series, so in his series, The Theoretical Minimum, he actually lays the base for all difficult concepts. Now, for example, if you are getting serious, now, if you were reading Stephen Hawking's books, his books do not contain any mathematical equations or nothing related to mathematics at all. So if you are actually now, after reading these books, if you want to get into the mathematical part and how maths is beautifully attached to physics, then I'd say divert your attention towards these books, the theoretical minimum, because these books contain a lot of mathematical equations, as you can see at this moment as well. And again, this is not a difficult book to read. It is absolutely simple. But again, if you were to read this book, I'd only suggest you if you're getting serious to know the actual workings of physics, that is the mathematical stuff of physics, if you're interested in that kind of thing. 
It is basically a textbook, a very small textbook containing the very basics of mathematical physics. So the very first part of this series is the classical mechanics, which contains all the basic concepts of classical mechanics. And after this, uh, you have quantum mechanics. Now this quantum mechanics, as you know, is going to be a little more difficult than the classical mechanics. So again, if you're only if you're serious, consider reading these books. And after this, the third part is the general and special relativity. Unfortunately, I don't have the printed version of that book I have in the Kindle. So anyway, if you're getting serious about learning physics, if you want to go into the mathematical parts of physics, I suggest these books for you. So until now, I've spoken only about two authors. Now let's jump to Dr. Richard Feynman. So if you all don't know, I am a huge fanboy of Richard Feynman and I have talked about his Feynman technique in one of my videos. So if you've not watched it out, please check it out right now. But again, the very first book that I want to talk about written by Richard Feynman is QED, which is the quantum electrodynamics, the strange theory of light and matter. In this book, he explains the theory that actually got him the Nobel Prize. So he won the Nobel Prize in 1965 for quantum electrodynamics. In this book, he in very simple terms has explained the theory that actually won him the Nobel Prize. And it is not difficult, it is somewhat tedious, so you'll need to pay a lot of attention while you're reading this book. But again, if you actually read it seriously and if you're spending some time on it, you'll it will not be a difficult read. It is only about a 140 pages long, it's not a novel, but it's really amazing. So if you want to know about QED, this is the book to go to. Then I'm talking about Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman. Again, this is a book written by uh, Dr. Richard Feynman, but this book has absolutely nothing to do with physics. So I know that this book is not related to the books, the other books that I'm showing you guys, but this book is actually about the life of Richard Feynman and how he was just a normal person. So yeah, what this book tells you is how a Nobel Prize winning physicist is actually outside of the college campus. So if you have some time and if you want to know more about the great Richard Feynman, except for his scientific work, please read this. Okay, so now we are talking about the Feynman lectures. Now I cannot stress this enough, but the Feynman lectures are actually supposed to be the holy grail of physics. These are the books which can be used by almost anybody who is willing to put in some hard work to learn physics in detail. So Richard Feynman was famous for explaining physics. So Richard Feynman, apart from his brilliant mind, was famous for explaining stuff in simple terms. While at Cornell University, he used to hold lectures for students who were not actually studying physics, but he used to teach them physics and he actually used to get them interested in studying physics. So. These are the books uh, which are the written down format of whatever the lectures he gave in the classroom. And if you ask anybody, any physicist or any college student about which book is their favorite apart from your college textbooks, I don't think anybody is going to tell you the name of any other book except of these three books. So the first part is uh, mainly mechanics, radiation and heat. Second part is mainly electromagnetism and matter and the third part is quantum mechanics. So if you want to again dive deep into the world of physics and try to understand the meaning behind every single thing that is happening in the world, this series is a must read. So again this series can be very long because as you can see the uh, print is extremely small and there are three volumes of this so so if you're not actually interested in learning in so much detail you can go for Richard Feynman's two different books the first one is six easy pieces they are actually a collection of lectures from the Feynman lectures itself but they contain only the basic ideas that you need to know for example it tells you about the relationship of physics with other sciences it tells you about the very basics of physics so if you're into that kind of thing six easy pieces is absolutely a brilliant book and it is very small it is not a huge book so you can finish it in a day or two as well the next book is again richard Feynman's six not so easy pieces so as you guessed by the title it is again uh, it is again taken from the Feynman lectures itself but these are the not so easy pieces so it is definitely tougher than the six easy pieces but again 
anybody with any working knowledge of mathematics should be able to understand them. So thank you so much guys for watching this short video. If you have any other book that you wanted to recommend to the viewers or if you have any doubts from this video, please let me know in the comment section and I'll be happy to help. I've also put down the links of all these books from Amazon in the link below. So if you're interested in buying any of these, I suggest you go for it. So that's it from my end. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with another video very soon.